Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome back to Buenos Aires. Beautiful Buenos Aires. We are here right off of the metro at General San Martin, right across from Plaza de General Jose de San Martin. I don't know. I don't remember the, the exact name of this plaza. It's Plaza San Martin. There's a Plaza San Martin in like basically every city in uh, Argentina and not just in Argentina, but in other countries as well. We did a video previously about Jose de San Martin. Thought I just stepped in something, but I didn't. We did a video previously about Jose de San Martin. There's a link to that down in the description, but we're gonna do another one because he's just, uh, he's such an important dude. And uh, I wanna talk about him a little bit more, but also uh, when we were here in Buenos Aires before, we did not get to go to the Cathedral of Buenos Aires where his tomb is. In fact, I didn't even know it was there. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go see Jose de San Martin's tomb. Come along. Before we do that, I just wanna say real quick, thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So right here in this spot, right across from Plaza San Martin, like right down there, actually, at the end of the, uh, by that stoplight there, if you take a right, that's Florida Street. The infamous Florida Street where you're going to go and change your dollars for pesos. That's the blue dollar rate. You're going to find an arbolito. And you're going you're gonna to change your dollars down there. We did a whole video about that. That's the link down in the description. But uh, we're not here for that today. We're not here to change dollars. Today we're here to go across the street here, Plaza San Martin. I want to see the statue of the liberator San Martin, the liberator of Argentina, uh, Chile, and Peru. And now, when we came here before, and we did uh, our video in Argentina about San Martin, we did that from uh, Mendoza, Argentina, because one of the plazas, one of the like central plazas in that city is Plaza San Martin. Now this plaza is a little further north. It's not central. If you uh, if you go south from here, a few metro stops, you get the Plaza Plaza Cinco or no uh, Plaza um, de Mayo, right? And that place, that Plaza de Mayo, that's like the central plaza of Buenos Aires. The Buenos Aires Cathedral is there. The uh, the Casa Rosada, the president's office is there. And uh, we did a video from there. That's like our very, very first video, actually, that we did here in Buenos Aires when we were here before. We did a video from there, from Plaza de Mayo, uh, talking about the presidential election, which was about to happen at the time we made the video. It was like a few days before the election. And of course, Javier Millet, uh, the right-wing, like, anarcho-capitalist guy, he won the election. And uh, he's been doing some pretty radical things here in Argentina as far as like policy, economic policy, and social policy and stuff like that. But we're not here to talk about him. We are here to talk about this guy right here up on his horse. Look at this. There he is, Jose de San Martin. General Jose de San Martin. And like I said, there's a Plaza San Martin in pretty much every, uh, like every city in Argentina not just in Argentina. We saw a Plaza San Martin in Lima, Peru. We saw, what else did we see? We saw some San Martin stuff in, uh, in um, Chile, in Santiago, at the Mason Museum, right? Because Jose de San Martin, infamously a Mason, a Freemason. Now, of course, this thing is all gated off, but we can like stick our camera through the bars and get a good view. And all the statues that you see of this dude, um, they're all pretty awesome. They they look like this basically. There's like uh, you know angels and and uh, other like like over there like like usually some of his like grenadiers, right? Like representations of his soldiers from his armies. And then he's up there on top on the horse. I would say probably the most. Uh, like the, the coolest one of all of these statues of San Martin is the one in, uh, in Mendoza. The one in Mendoza um, up at the top of like 
there's a hill in Mendoza where at the very in, in this big park there's like a big metropolitan park and up at the very very top um, is this statue to Jose de San Martin and the army of the Andes which he formed in Mendoza and then they like marched across the Andes in this huge long crazy trek to get into Chile and uh, liberate Chile is amazing feat and uh, that's all in our previous video about Jose de San Martin which I think you should check out it's down in the link down in the description and uh, what we want to see though is we want to see the tomb of San Martin which uh, is pretty close it's down in um, like I said Plaza de Mayo and we're gonna head down there but anyway I just wanted to start this video off here from right here in front of uh, the statue of Jose de San Martin before we actually go and see his final resting place and we can talk a little bit more about uh, how he ended up where he ended up because uh, spoiler alert he didn't die here in Buenos Aires he died in France but his body's right here in Buenos Aires there's a whole story that goes along with that too so let's head out. Let's go. We're going. Go to Plaza de Mayo. Bonus. Listen to this dude absolutely shredding in the in the Sufte station. So we are here in Plaza de Mayo. Plaza de Mayo. There's Casa Rosada, where the president works. And we are here, back in the place where we filmed our first video here on the channel, really. Our first video here in Plaza de Mayo. But we're not here to see Casa Rosada, and we're not here to talk about the current uh, government of Argentina. We're here to talk about Jose de San Martin, who is entombed right there in the Catedral de Buenos Aires. Now, it doesn't really look like a lot of the cathedrals that we've seen in some other cities. It's got a very, very interesting look. Um, and at first, when I first visited here, I had no idea that that was the Cathedral of Buenos Aires, but it is. It's Catedral de Buenos Aires. And Jose de San Martin is in there. But before we go in there, well, we gotta talk a little bit more about Jose de San Martin because Honestly, like in the previous video that we made about Jose de San Martin and also some of the other videos that we made uh, like our video about Bernardo O'Higgins and, um, and Jose Miguel Cabrera and their like feud in Chile which involved Jose de San Martin a lot. Um, we sort of ended it, it wasn't really at the end of Jose de San Martin's life. Um, and just a quick recap, you can check out those videos, links in the description. But just a quick recap, basically, Jose de San Martin, like, fought wars of independence in the early 1810s here in Argentina. Essentially freed Argentina from the Spanish, then, um, you know, went over to Cuyo province in Mendoza, where we were, and uh, raised an army of uh, the Army of the Andes, mostly, mostly Chilean soldiers who had lost the battle in Chile and had to march back over the Andes to, uh, to Cuyo province, to Mendoza raised the army of the Andes, marched back over the, the Andes with Bernardo O'Higgins and, uh, and fought for the independence of Chile and then secured the independence of Chile. And that's more or less where we sort of ended his story in previous videos. I did mention that after that, he raised a fleet of ships and sailed the ships up to Peru and then liberated Peru. But of course, that's a way, way simplified version of the story. Um, what you got to understand is throughout this entire time, because Argentina was the first uh, to be liberated, like immediately after it was liberated, uh, civil wars broke out. A series of civil wars that lasted for decades, mainly between uh, Unitarians who wanted Buenos Aires to basically be in charge of all of Argentina and have a unitary government where all the decisions were made in Buenos Aires, and Federalists who basically wanted each one of the provinces to be their own sort of like independently governed um, 
uh, entity with like a loose confederation and a very weak government in Buenos Aires that would sort of coordinate everything. And this is basically the civil war that was fought in Argentina and it spilled over into other now countries like Uruguay and Brazil. And it was fought for it for decades. In addition to that, there were just good old fashioned power struggles, you know, rivalries between uh, warlords in different, um, in different provinces and stuff like that. So it's, it was a very, very complex situation under which uh, Jose de San Martin was doing all of this, right? Like raising armies and raising navies. While he was doing it, there was a civil war going on in his country. And so every time he had to like go back to Buenos Aires and be like, hey, could you give me some more money so I can raise an army? Hey, could you give me some more na you know, money so I can raise a navy? Buenos Aires, the government there was fighting civil wars. And so while Jose de San Martin, his number one priority was liberation from the Spanish, uh, it wasn't always the number one priority of like the other people that he had to ally with and the other factions that he had to like get money from basically to do all of this. So it's important to remember that. But basically, after a series of events, he was able to get enough money to raise a navy and sail it up to Peru. And in Peru, that was like the royalist stronghold. So the Spanish forces, the forces in the Americas that were loyal to the Spanish crown, Peru was like their stronghold. They had like 20, 25,000 troops up there. And Jose de San Martin had basically like 5,000 troops, more or less. So he was outnumbered like four or five to one. And so he wasn't gonna be able to fight a straight up war in Peru. So he tried to essentially do what he did in Chile, which is basically split his forces up into smaller groups incite insurrections, free slaves, get them to join uh, the cause, get certain royalist troops to like defect, especially like generals and, and officers and get them to like defect and bring their troops over to his cause. And he had sort of like a mixed success doing this. Um, it didn't always work out, but he was able to pressure the royalist forces um, during, the, during this time period and now, the royalists themselves were in kind of a bad state. They had lost uh, a series of campaigns in different places, lost a ton of territory. They were sort of cornered into this stronghold in Peru by Jose de San Martin's forces from the south and Simon Bolivar and Antonio Jose de Sucre, who we've mentioned in previous videos in Ecuador. Uh, they were coming at them from the north. And in addition to this, after the the Napoleonic Wars and King Ferdinand was like uh, like put back on the throne in Spain uh, the the a lot of people in Spain essentially they had drafted a constitution a liberal constitution where the monarchy would not have absolute power and the it would the the people would have more power with the monarchy still technically in charge it's a very liberal progressive idea at the time and ferdinand was having none of it so he had trouble at home as well so it's important to remember the spanish weren't in a really good state and that was really what allowed um the revolutions to be successful during the 1810s and the early 1820s here in the americas so as Jose de San Martin was like having mixed success trying to take over Peru and knock out the rest of the royalist forces, he realized that he wasn't going to be able to do it alone and he was going to have to uh, reach out to Simon Bolivar and the armies of Gran Colombia and ally with them in order to, uh, to like finish, finish off the Spanish. Um, but in the meantime, someone had to be in charge of Peru because he had, he had essentially like come in and caused enough trouble to like knock off um, the, uh, the royalist forces and lay siege to Lima. So he called a, uh, a public uh, cabildo, basically like a, a, a public meeting of um, pretty much anybody who, anybody who mattered, you know, all aristocracy, to decide what was going to be the, the future of, of Peru. And Unlike in Chile, where he had his buddy Bernardo O'Higgins, who he could just like put in charge and then like take off to go fight in Peru, there was nobody really strong enough politically to be in charge of all of Peru. So he, Jose de San Martin, was appointed protector of Peru. So he's now basically like in charge of Peru 
and he's still fighting a war with the royalists there. So eventually, after uh, after Sucre and uh, and Simon Bolivar defeated the Spanish in Ecuador, Jose de San Martin goes up to Guayaquil in Ecuador and he meets with Simon Bolivar. And this meeting uh, is like completely secret and nobody really knows what they talked about because it was just the two of them in the room. There were no witnesses and no records were, were, uh, were kept. So basically, it's lost to history exactly what was said. But after Jose de San Martin went back down to Peru and essentially abdicated his leadership, and gave up uh, the fight against the Royalists, and Simon Bolivar and his forces came down and eventually were able to finish off the Royalist forces in Peru. Now, that brings us to Jose de San Martin. He's essentially retired now, and he, uh, he, he leaves, and he intends to go back to Cuyo province, to Mendoza. He wants to settle in Argentina because uh, he has ties there, of course, and, you know, his wife is from there, but he, um, when he gets to Cujo province in Mendoza, he's really unable to settle in Buenos Aires just because, like, or in, uh, in Argentina, just because, like, there's still a civil war going on there. It's not a great place to settle. Um, there are uh, factions fighting each other within the provinces. The provinces are fighting each other. All the provinces are fighting Buenos Aires. So it's a little spicy. Um, and in addition to that, like, a year or so after uh, he retired from Peru, uh, his wife died. And so he doesn't really have any ties to Argentina anymore, strong ties. So he takes his daughter Mercedes, and uh, or Maria Mercedes, his daughter, and they, uh, they head off to Europe. So when he gets to Europe, Mercedes is in school at that point, and he wants her to finish her education, and then he plans to return back to Argentina to sort of uh, uh, basically continue the fight uh, in the during in the civil wars, and there is a weird sort of strange um, like episode where after Maria Mercedes is finished with school, he offers his services out as a general to to fight in the civil wars in Argentina, and he sails all the way over there, and. Basically, it's a situation where uh, while he's sailing, stuff on the ground, circumstances change. The people who he uh, planned to ally with are no longer in power because they were like overthrown while he was sailing across the ocean. And he tries to make port in a few different cities uh, where he has allies, but for one reason or another, basically because his allies have been either overthrown or uh, the war on the the situation of the war on the ground has changed drastically He's really not able to make port in any one of these cities in Rio de Janeiro first and then in Montevideo and then in Buenos Aires and He ends up just like getting back on the boat and heading back to Europe so it was a, a long trip for not very much and At this point his health is really failing He's had health problems through this entire situation, and they're getting very bad at this point. He's very old at this point as well. And when he finally makes his way back to Europe, he settles in a small town in France. And in 1850, in France, he dies. So he didn't die here in Buenos Aires, even though his body is right here. And he died in 1850 but his body was not entombed here until 1880, 30 years later. And why is that? Well, it's because of <laughs> the same reason that, that a lot of things are, are happening or not happening here in Argentina. There's still civil wars going on. From 1850 to 1880, there's still wars, power struggles, factional wars and civil wars happening here in, uh, in Argentina and there are many attempts to sort of repatriate his body here and because he's such a powerful figure in Argentine history and so respected by the Arge uh, like Argentinian people both sides of a lot of these civil war conflicts are like paying homage to him and attempting to 
to repatriate his body so that they can be the ones who claimed that they brought the liberator San Martin back to, uh, to Argentina, right? And eventually, eventually, he's brought back here in 1880 and he's entombed in the uh, Cathedral of Buenos Aires and he's been there ever since. So I think it's time for us to finally stop like jabbering on about all of this and go in and see the final resting place of Jose de San Martin. Inside the Cathedral of Buenos Aires, I'm speaking very quietly because I don't want to disturb anyone in here. It really is a very beautiful cathedral, even though from the outside it looks quite different than some of the cathedrals that we've seen uh, on the inside. It's got the same, same stylings. I think we found it. There is a large casket, a big stone casket with lots of statues around it, flag of Argentina draped over it, and two soldiers wearing ceremonial dress guarding it. If that is not the tomb of General Jose de San Martin, well, I don't know what is. I don't actually want to go, like, film in there because I think those soldiers might get mad at me for doing that. So take a look. There it is right there. I'm going to go in and take a closer look. But I don't think I can bring you with me. So actually, some people, other people, were filming and taking pictures in here. And the soldiers were not doing or saying anything, which makes me think that it's fine. And there, on the plaque on the wall, Jose de San Martin. Guerrero de la Independencia, Argentina, Libertador de Chile y del Perú. Warrior for the independence of Argentina and the liberator of Chile and Peru. This is a really incredible tomb. And all around, there's like the names of some of the battles, Lima. Maipu here, the Battle of Maipu, the culminating battle in the War for Independence of Chile. Over there, Chacabuco. It was like one of the first battles in the War for Independence of Chile. So we've seen now, well, two and a half, two and a half tombs of famous liberators. We saw the tomb of Antonio Jose de Sucre in Quito. We saw the outside of the building that houses the tomb of Bernardo O'Higgins in Santiago in Chile because, well, it was never open. We tried going four times and when it was supposed to be open and it was never open. But we saw where it was, and uh, if you want to see either of those, check down in the description for links to those videos. But now we've seen, we've seen Jose de San Martin's too. Now Antonio Jose de Sucre and Bernardo O'Higgins, as important as they were to the battles for independence in the Americas, uh, they're not as important in history as Jose de San Martin. Jose de San Martin and Simón Bolívar are like the two most important historical figures in the battle for independence. And now we've seen one of their tombs. So at some point, we're gonna have to go and see uh, Simón Bolívar's tomb. We were able to see his uniform in that really cool museum of gold and weapons of the, wo of the world in Peru, in Lima. 
Still haven't seen his tomb. And one of these days, we will. As we head out of there, let other people see. It's very crowded. There's a lot of people, as you can see behind me. A lot of people trying to get in, so we'll let them in. We saw what we came here to see. Take one last look at the beautiful cathedral of Buenos Aires. And I think it's time we head back outside and we wrap up, wrap up our video. So that was really incredible to see. Um, like I said, two and a half now tombs of famous liberators and uh, yeah that was that was really incredible it was incredible to see that and you can tell just by the tomb itself how grand it is and also the uh, the story of how you know for 30 years different factions here in Argentina were trying to fight to be the one to repatriate his body here and just how many people are in there there's a huge crowd of people in there I'm sure every day uh, to see the tomb of the liberator and you know we've traveled all over South America and in all these places we've been in the places he liberated right Argentina Chile Peru there's stuff everywhere named after this guy streets are named after him plazas are named after him uh, whole towns are named after him so you know his uh, his figure is, it looms large. It looms large, not just in the history of Argentina, or Chile, or Peru, but in the history of, uh, of South America, in the history of the wars of independence in South America. And it's, it's, kind, of, um, it's kind of hard to overstate that, to be honest. Now, during his... Um, his life, as well as afterwards, some controversies have popped up about him. And essentially the controversy is uh, he, uh, he was accused during his life by uh, certain people, like, for example, Jose Miguel Cabrera from Chile. Uh, he was accused of basically just wanting to be another monarch, right? He, he wanted to really only liberate the Americas just so that he could be, become a new king. And uh, there is some truth to that. He did want to have a, uh, um, essentially a, a constitutional monarchy where there would be a monarch um, still in charge of the Americas, not really full independence. His reasoning for this was that he thought that a newly uh, independent country in the Americas, in order to gain respect from the rest of the world, the power centers in Europe, that they would have to be uh, there would have to be a monarch. Um, so you can take that as, uh, as controversial or not controversial. And regardless of how you see him, how you view him, um, and his, his uh, like reasoning, his motivations, you can't deny his actions. The guy, for decades, was able to not just lead armies to fight these wars, against overwhelming odds but like I mentioned in the previous video about San Martin in order to fight these wars he had to like make all these political power maneuvers and make alliances with all different factions all across different countries in order to raise enough capital to raise the armies and raise the navies and get all of this done and that is I think probably the most amazing achievement. The battlefield accomplishments are great, but the fact that he was able to do the political wrangling that it took for the decades that he was doing it to, to be able to raise the armies and the forces to get done what he wanted to accomplish, uh, that I think is his, his greatest accomplishment. And like I said, if you, if you travel around South America, you're gonna see him everywhere, statues, names on streets, 
towns named after him, plazas named after him, and I think that's a testament to uh, to his accomplishments and to uh, to how truly important he is to well, not just even the history of South America, but the history of the entire world. He is a world historical figure who should be known by everyone and should always be remembered. And if you come here to Buenos Aires, you can view his final resting place here at the Cathedral of Buenos Aires. Anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough. We've now made two and a half videos, more or less, about Jose de San Martin. And I think it's time we've closed the book on this channel, on Jose de San Martin. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the other videos for more about San Martin. And uh, stay tuned. Lots more coming from Buenos Aires. Lots more from Argentina. We'll see you in the next one.